Hey everyone, it's Jordan the Video Guy here, and I am not a Las Vegas kind of guy. I don't gamble, and flashing lights frankly alarm me, but I'll brave it for one thing, and that's NAB. It's the biggest video show in the world. We get shooters from all over coming to check out the latest and greatest kit. We see all the big announcements from the big manufacturers and a bunch of small surprises. I've spent a few days checking everything out, and uh, we're going to have a few conversations about the stuff that I found the most exciting. Hey guys, so I've had a chance to take a look at the show and now I'm here with Dave Dugdale, other YouTube video celebrity. Hello. Uh, Chris isn't around so we can just talk about video completely <laughs> uninterrupted. So what's the stuff that's really jumped out at you this year? Um, any surprises or anything that you're really excited to look at? Well, black magic always comes out with your cameras. There's always something always, yeah, yeah, they're always that good completely, completely changes Monday the game yeah, and then we'll exactly. see if it actually changes the game. But you know, it, actually one thing that stood out to me that is probably going to be used over and over again mm -hmm. um, is not a camera related thing. It's more of a post-processing thing. Yeah. Adobe, I am a Premiere Pro, Pro yep. person yep. and they have this thing called Morph Cut. So like if yeah. I'm talking and I screw up or I scratch my head and I bring it down mm -hmm. and I cut right there, I can bring the two clips together, yeah. layer the morph on top of it, the mm -hmm. morph effect. And if I move slightly, it'll like morph it yeah. within a few frames. And so I don't have to jump to or cut to B-roll. Yeah. And to me, that's like, I know I, if that works, right. I'll be using that a lot. So of course, the big thing people want to talk about is cameras. Yes, cameras, uh, cameras. Anything jump out at you as compelling? There's the Mini Ursa. Ursa the Mini Ursa. Ursa, it's the first ergonomic camera they've ever yeah. made. So I'm, I'm really curious about that because that's been one of my issues with Black Magic historically. And I think, you know, the, these people that follow me know I'm more interested in the yeah. a hybrid camera where I can shoot stills because I love shooting stills and yeah. I love shooting video. So. Hence learning DSLR video too yeah. and now learning video. video. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I, you know, the Black, both those cameras really don't interest me. Yeah. But, um, like one of the things I did see was the A7 II. So I put my SD card in and I was playing around, you know, with yep. my my camera. And then I picked up theirs and put my card in. I was jiggling. I was like, whoa! It's incredibly it's, good. It's yeah, amazing. I was like, when are we gonna see that in the A7S? And he's like, eh, you know, yeah. he goes, and can I have a touch screen too? And yeah. can I have internal 4K and yeah. that kind of stuff? And it sounds like they're heading in that direction. And I'm like, if they come up with those three things yeah. in the A7S, oh my gosh. So I was wondering, because you just did that video with the V-Log, yeah. and you're really good at creating S-Log. You have a lot um, of practice doing it. No, I have a lot of practice. No, you did a great job. So how does V-Log light, yeah. I guess what it's called, how does that compare to S-Log 2? Uh, what I really found, it's very, like it is a log profile. and okay. if you, They all have the same basic nature to them, whether it's V-Log or RE-Log or whatever. Um, but uh, it is definitely, it's designed to be shot at 400 ISO specifically. So okay. it's not a low light setting or anything like that. But the thing I've fought with with the GH4 consistently has been skin tones and highlights. Yeah, and like you said, it gets kind of like and it, cinematic at, D gets all waxy. Yeah, and, yeah it's, it's yeah. weird. I'll have some shots, at identical settings and skin tones look great. Yeah. Go change it, like just zoom a lens. And now all of a sudden I've got wax face. Yeah. And I don't know why exactly it's wax doing that. Face. <laughs> and then uh, Go to the a wax museum. <laughs> exactly. Everything looks like Madame Tussauds, which is right down the way there. Uh, but then, yeah, with S-Log, I do find it's consistent. You know, it takes some work to process. And that's, I think that's the thing Panasonic's most afraid of, is people who've never worked with Log before yeah, yeah. will get this and they'll be like, oh, it's incredibly noisy. Because it's true, the bottom and shadow layers are always on true. any log file. Yeah. They're always noisy. And I think firmware is actually one of the biggest things this year, is talking to people like, uh, you know, looking at Convergent Design and Atomos yeah. and Panasonic. Yeah. And Sony's just done quite a few nice updates. The big thing is what you buy now, there's now this culture that keeps getting out there of we're going to keep making it better, um, which is great because for the longest time we've had really tight release cycles and I think it comes back to you know the transition from 4K and all these developments, bigger sensors, that's starting to slow down now. The, I think there's, we're going to start to see longer release cycles and more regular firmware updates yeah, to keep yeah. people interested in it. And certainly Magic Lantern's proved with Canon that <laughs> There's a lot of room to dig in those yeah, core camera room. guts and pull a lot more <laughs> useful functionality. Exactly. Out. So I, I don't know if you've noticed, but walking around the show, um, I think there's it's, it's a massive shift that's happened. Not in yep. the booths. Yep. Well, actually in the booths too, because yep. a lot of them are demonstrating cameras of the A7S, yep. the GH4. But what you're not, and people just walking around like myself and you, yep. what are we carrying? It's a all mirrorless, yeah. AS, a, um, Sony, A7S's, yeah, GH4's. Exactly. 
Uh, I'm seeing tons of those, but what I'm not seeing is yeah, Canon DSLRs. Which yeah. if you you know, I was here two years ago, and it's every all... person that we saw was walking around with yep. a 5D3, a 7D. The switch is happening right now, and I really think Canon's very close to missing the boat on this. Uh, but good talking to you, Dave. Yeah, um, it was absolutely good to finally see you face to face, and yeah, hopefully nice we'll see you here next year. I will be here. Hey guys, so I'm back in Calgary now uh, hey. after checking out everything at the show. We missed you here. Everybody and missed you. You were clearly missed. Everywhere I went, they're like, you're okay, but where's the other, the, the main guy? Where's he at? <laughs> and they're like, good, he's not around because yeah. we want to talk video because it's NAB. They exactly. Didn't miss me at all. So I'm going to talk video right now. <laughs> and uh, it was nice to talk to Dave, but I definitely want to give some thoughts on my favorite bits and pieces yeah. from the show. We want to know what you liked at the show and what our viewers at home are going to be excited about from this NAB uh, convention. So my number one pick for best of the show by a pretty wide margin mm -hmm. was the new solo drone from 3DR. Ah, yeah, very and cool. it fixes so many of the issues that we've got with something like the DJI Phantoms right now. Mm -hmm. The coolest thing is it's got a lot of pre-built in moves um, that yeah. operate the drone, but also the gimbal on the bottom of it. It's great if you're a novice. I mean, you could do things like orbits and selfies and crane cam stuff without yep. having to be an aerial master with these controllers. It's cable cam mode is amazing. Mm -hmm. You can just have it do this long move and you can control the camera while it's happening what or I have really it sweep like around you. Is you've got, you know, okay, yeah, you've got these pre-built things, but if you do want to practice and become a, a genius with these drones, yeah. you've got a built-in video game yeah. with a simulator. Yeah, you just plug it into any HDMI yeah. monitor, you're using the same remote and you can learn to fly with it. You can crash your it's, digital camera over and over and over and over until you're ready to do it for the real thing on your drone. It's really cool and really well thought out. Hmm. Uh, and unparalleled GoPro support, that's very cool. Yeah, you so can actually control the GoPro right through the same app that you're flying the yeah. drone with. It's very smart. Without crashing or interfering with your existing uh, drone. Yeah. Yeah. Price is good too, but the most important thing is you shouldn't have to buy too many of these. Okay, so that was very cool, but what else did you find there that was going to be exciting? The other thing that I really loved was the new Vedra lenses, mm -hmm. and these are cinema lenses uh, mm -hmm. right now in a micro four thirds mount but just extremely well produced. Uh, they've got a great feel to them and there's next to no breathing on them, which and really surprised me. And not crazy expensive? No, you're looking like 800 to 1,000 for their spherical. Mm. And what's really interesting is they announced that they're gonna come out with an anamorphic lens and a set of lenses Very that cool. we don't know the exact price, but they're gonna be under 5,000, well, which in anamorphic great. terms is. And this is a real lens. You don't have to focus mm. it twice like you do with adapters. This is single focus. Mm. Uh, and based on the optics that we're getting off their initial series, these are going to be beautiful lenses, I'm guessing. Well, very good timing, too, because we just did the GH4. We know exactly. that anamorphic support's out now, and probably other cameras are going to do that. They're going to make support for Sony's as well? I am hoping so, yeah. yeah that seems to be the direction they're headed. Mm -hmm. But now with that, and we've got monitor support now from the Odysseys and the oh, Shoguns, yeah. For GH4's anamorphic mode, you're going to be able to put together an anamorphic kit for under 10 grand. You could be up exactly and shooting an anamorphic what video. For and predicting. Yeah. yeah. All right. So of course, this NAB, you probably yes. got to play with some amazing cameras. I did get to put my hands on an Alexa 65 and look at the image, <laughs> and it was. It was as good as I expected it to be, which is really disappointing because oh, I'll never get to use anything like that I can't like wait that to be on camera yeah. on the Alexa 65 now. We can use it on all our it's, TCS videos. We can not afford it. <laughs> I think there's like two of them and they're rental only. So a C300 Mark II, that's out as well. Hey, yeah, and we're going to be looking at that, but okay. not a lot of surprises there. Ursa Mini was a big bump. Um, I'm always curious. It seems like Blackmagic finds a way to somehow sabotage <laughs> every one of their camera releases. So uh, we'll, we'll see. see once that one comes out. But the one less people are talking about that I actually found kind of interesting was the JVC LS300. Mm, okay. And this is a super 35 sensor, so still a big chip mm -hmm. camera. Micro Four Thirds lens mount yeah, though. Easy adaptable. So you can yeah. adapt it to pretty much anything out there mm. and actually change the frame size. So if you want to drop on 16 mil lenses, you can do that and shoot 2K. And it actually it. detects it, which is really, really cool. Yeah, yeah, or you can manually scan it as well if huh. there's no electric contacts with the lens. It's Very really cool. smart. Um, but what I've found, JVC has always had, I would say, some of the nicest image quality in sure. terms of skin tone, way it handles highlights, has always been really nice. They just haven't made a good, interesting camera in a while. They've been kind of wandering in the wilderness, doing a lot of broadcast stuff. But the big chip revolution's been going on for a while and they've been missing it. This is their answer to that. Hmm. And it's, it's a really interesting camera because there's not a lot of image controls on. No flat right. profile, so it's not something where you're really grading the image yeah. heavily. But the image that comes straight out of it is really beautiful. It had that JVC look that I've been missing. Now, admittedly, I've seen the footage and it is beautiful looking footage, but right. this is a bit of a wild card choice. I mean, JVC really did a lot of ridiculous stuff for a few years. Right. And what you're effectively saying is that you got this video camera, yes. which takes beautiful 
JPEG, so to speak. It has right. no raw support, basically. That, that would be kind of, yeah, the still <laughs> comparison to this. But there's a lot of things like, uh, you know, event work or journalism where you sure. want to just shoot those JPEGs, you need good looking files that you can deliver quickly. This, I feel like, is kind of the video answer to that. Most of the cinema cameras don't have a great default profile because they're yeah. expecting you to go shoot a flat profile or log or something and work on it. This is a camera when you've got to shoot and quickly deliver. Who I see it really for is broadcast creatives. A lot of them are using C300s right now. Hmm. Uh, this is a lot less expensive. And honestly, I prefer the straight out of camera image. It just seems like kind of a niche product for lazy people. And, uh, <laughs> and I don't think many people, I mean, we like to have the control. We like to finalize it. We're gonna have to edit it anyway. So we're gonna see it. They're gonna send us one. Yep. We're gonna test it out, be more objective about it. We actually get to play with it ourselves. Yeah, it's an interesting idea. We'll see if that's all it is or mm -hmm. if it's actually you know, a choice that people might be interested in. Well, but that's all coming down the road, guys. Uh, I want to thank Dave Dugdale for taking the yeah, time out of his NAB schedule to talk to us. Uh, he does a great show. Well, you're back, and yep. we're happy you're back. I'm happy you're back. I missed you. <laughs> so thanks very much for wa watching. Hopefully you guys found this very interesting. And uh, don't forget, check us out on Twitter. Check us out on Instagram. Check us out on Facebook. Facebook you subscribe. Know. Mm -hmm. Do all the things that are now mandatory in a social media <laughs> world. And we'll yeah. see you guys next week. All right. See you guys soon.